number four, right? Number four. So, you know, I think the big thing I, I want our players to comprehend is kind of got to take these limits off of what we can accomplish here. Um, you know, I think each individual player has an opportunity every day, right? And uh, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the past, regardless of what hasn't happened before, um, you know, really got a choice to make, okay? You can complain and remain the same, uh, or you can wake up every day and make a decision and you can commit and work towards the possibilities, right? I think we got to leave the excuses behind here. And I really believe with our players right now, it's all about changing their thinking. Uh, and if they can do that, they can change their lives. Um, so a lot of that has nothing to do with football, but I think it's a little bit of where we're at um, as a whole here. But, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased with the effort from the players. Obviously, the execution, we've got a long way to go in that area. But uh, so far, so good here. What questions do we have? Let, let me say one thing before I forgot there. Rick would scold me if I didn't. Um, this weekend, we've got a very unique opportunity, right? We certainly appreciate you guys and the things that y'all have done to create awareness about it. But uh, we're going to have a chalk talk this weekend uh, and really an opportunity to host high school coaches, middle school coaches, uh, anybody that wants to learn more about football. I think we've got 12 different NFL organizations that will be here along with a lot of different other people. Uh, we're thankful for those people participating. Uh, this is a combination of uh, chalk talk and an opportunity to engage the high school players, but we also uh, will be doing a lot of professional development this weekend, right, with our staff, right? So each one of these people that are coming into town, you know, will spend time with us and also speak uh, to the high school coaches. So, you know, we'd like to invite any and every high school or middle school coach that wants to learn more about football. It'll be a unique opportunity. Uh, and you can find that information online. And anything you guys can do to publicize that, we appreciate it. So. Madden team. Is that yeah, yeah, hey. <laughs> I think uh, we're giving you guys an opportunity to come if you want to. So, Bill, Bill you, you're talking about the changing attitudes. Are you finding much resistance or pockets of resistance for that? Uh, to be honest with you, we have had zero resistance. Um, you know, and uh, I think that's probably the biggest compliment I can give the players is they've completely embraced every change. Um, you know, and I think it goes back to um, I think the the people within the organization have done a good job of establishing trust. Uh, there's been really good communication. I think we've explained why we do what we do and how we do it. Um, and overall, we've hired really good people, right, and uh, people that are experts at what they do. And I think immediately when the players sense that they care for them and they can help them, uh, I think that's the reason we haven't had much resistance at all. So it's probably the best thing that about where we're at right now is the reception from the players. Is that the key to developing culture, is knowing that what you just said, the players that you care about them and all that? And, and what, what are some signs that you've seen that what you're – Hoping to take group is, I'm sure you're impatient on some level. You want it all to be there, but how, what signs are you seeing that it's changing? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I think what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, and let me say this: I'm not saying every player's perfect, right? I mean, I think we we still have a ways to go relative to being on time, um, being engaged. Um, you know, some of the habits uh, that need to improve, some of the self-discipline that needs to improve. But overall, uh, we got guys that are they're trying, right? And I, I think it comes back to trust, right? It's the ultimate, it's kind of the straw that uh, stirs the drink, right? So, um, you know, I think that's what we've established to some degree, you know? Um, and we're in the middle of the football component, right? I think you work a lot on intangibles throughout the off season, phase one and two, is a lot about defining expectations being consistent, being fair, uh, for them to know you're not going to blink, right, and, and they got to do it a certain way. You know, I think it's important that we're all on the same page within the organization. Um, we've had, you know, the staff's done a terrific job um, in that regard. So, yeah, there's no question. And ultimately they get to a point where they trust what's happening uh, and they can, you know, wake up each day and come in and do the work and do the work the prescribed work the right way, right? I think that's where we're 
that's where we need to improve, need to execute better. Now that you're through the helmets only acclimation phase, what's your sense of the physicality from this team? Yeah, I think that um, there's no lack of effort. Uh, there's no lack of, uh, there's no fear when it comes to that, in my opinion. Um, it's one thing to be physical. It's another to be fundamentally sound, if that makes sense, right? So I think right now we have effort, we have physicality, but it's how we do it, right? I think ultimately um, there is some conceptual and strategy part of this game, but you have to do the very simple things really well. You've got to block and tackle. You've got to throw and catch. You've got to cover kicks. Uh, you, you know, I think the basics do the simple things really well. Right? I think that's how we've played really good football in the past. we got a ways to go uh, with this team to get there. Billy, what's been the assessment of the quarterback position since everyone left? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. I think uh, we take a step forward each day. Um, you know, I think obviously the install is starting to pile up. But today was the first day I felt like, okay, hey, you know, we got quite a bit in. Um, a few more mental errors today than maybe we need. Um, but overall, I think those guys are doing really well. You know, they're, they're coming in extra. Um, I see it sticking, you know, a little bit of a whole part, whole approach. Uh, but it is sticking, and they're retaining information, and I see improvement. So, um, pleased with that group. What's that challenge been for Anthony and Jack as well, you know, trying to learn a new offense but still being inexperienced themselves? Yeah, I mean, I think the quarterbacks as a whole, you know, this is a developmental game, right? I mean, I think that what I would, you know, I think it's important to understand that we do a lot more practice than we do play, right, when, when it comes to football. So um, this is where you learn, right? This is where you develop as a player, right? And regardless of your experience level, this is where you get your first experience, right? And we, we like to think as a staff that we're replicating the game. You know, I think that's your job as a coach, right, is to replicate, replicate the game for the players uh, on the practice field. And, you know, that's our job as teachers, right? That's our jobs in terms of um, the way we approach practice, the way we meet, the way we walk through, the way we um, work in individual and in group drills and then translate that to team. Um, now we're four days in, we're moving our way through the field zones, we're moving our way through the downs and distances. Uh, we'll scrimmage practice eight. Um, so, you know, we're, we're about halfway through here in terms of the whole picture. Um, and I think that reality is this is where you get the most experience as a football player. What have you seen from Finley Graham so far, receiver, and kind of what went into that move there? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, you know, that room in general, we needed another player, right? We were a little short. Uh, Finley's played there in the past. Um, you know, Finley's very much a developmental player, you know, and I think consistency is probably one of the qualities that best describes a player that I have respect for. And I think Finley, like a lot of our players on our team, they need to be more consistent, right, as people and as football players. I'm sure uh, Nacon's frustrated that Yeah, very impressed with Naquan as a person, right? Uh, he has some maturity. Uh, he has a big picture perspective, right? He can see things from a coach's perspective. I think he's intelligent and uh, I think he's tough. He's been through some things. I think he's resilient. He has some leadership qualities. Uh, and we need the guy, right? We not only need the guy as a running back, we're missing the guy from that perspective, but we're also missing his ability to affect the rest of the team, right? So I would say in my short time, Naquan is one of the players I have the most respect for just because of his approach and overall attitude. What do you like about Jack Miller particularly? And does his experience help him a little bit because he lost a very experienced guy and he kind of Yeah, no, well. No question. I think, um, well, there's a reason Jack's here, first of all. I think we anticipated um, potential issues. Um, you know, I think Jack um, comes across as a guy who has been in competition before, right? Uh, he's played uh, in games before, right? And I think it do he does come across like it's not too big for him. You know, he's comfortable. 
Uh, he's able to handle the good and the bad. You know, I think he can make a play and then be the same guy the next play. He can make a mistake and be the same guy the next play. So there's some steadiness there uh, that I appreciate. Uh, certainly, you can see that the ball comes out of his hand. He's got arm talent. He's accurate. Uh, and so far, he's picking it up pretty quick. So um, I think we made a good decision there, and uh, we're glad Jack's on our team. Ben Schultz, a guy that has been a leader for this team that you've seen out here and haven't seen out here some days. Um, what does he bring, and I guess where is he at physically? Yeah, Ventrell's cleared. Um, Ventrell is in the process of uh, – trying to complete his degree, right? So he's a veteran player. Um, he's in the back half of his career. He's trying to, there's a particular course that he has to take this semester so he can graduate in the summer. Uh, so there's a conflict on Tuesday and Thursday. So we, we just get him on Saturday right now. Now that's probably uh, not a bad thing due to his injury and the amount of volume that he can handle. So it's working out. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you when Ventrell is here, uh, you can feel his presence, right? He's a vocal guy. He's got uh, great presence and energy. Uh, and he's certainly been a very productive player. I mean, just two years ago, I think he's a preseason All-SEC player that has played well here. So, um, you know, I think the consensus here last year was when he got hurt that that was a little bit of a setback for the team and the defense in particular. So we're excited he's back. Um, enjoy getting to know Ventrell. Um, He's another player, much like Naquan, that I think has some leadership quality and some maturity about him, uh, and I'm, I'm thankful for Ventrell. One last question, Edgar. Yeah, I want to ask you, Corey Raymond, um, what's he like in action? I mean, you got to know him, and now you're coaching with him. And what's he like out there in the way he just gets along with players? And it seems yeah. Guy. No, I think he's a professional. You know, I think the guy's uh, – He's been, you know, he's been through some battles, right? I mean, he's played in the big games. He's coached in the big games. Uh, he's a guy that uh, there's a certain level of wisdom and experience, you know, when it comes to coaching players. When you've been through it before, you've seen a lot of players evolve throughout your career. So there's no panic there with C-Ray, right? right? He's kind of a smooth veteran that, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. And he's confident in his process, uh, and we, we, I certainly appreciate that. He's the assistant head coach for defense, and I think he brings uh, some presence over there. I know the players respect him because he's very good at what, he's, what he does, right? He has a pedigree, he has a track record. Uh, and, it, you know, the more you get to know Corey, the more you know he cares about people. Um, he does a good job communicating with his guys, and he's a fantastic teacher, right? Uh, it goes back to kind of what we were talking about earlier, right? Fundamentals uh, are critical if you want to be successful as an individual player and as a team. And Corey is as good as they come when it comes to teaching the basic fundamentals of defensive backs. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Thank you all.